Hi, George here. I keep on seeing questions asking if Photoshop Elements 2025 has generative fill, like the Adobe Photoshop program has, and I thought I would answer those here. First, we'll take a look at the new fill technique here that comes with Photoshop Elements 2025. We'll see how that is improved over the previous content or fill, and we'll then compare that to the Adobe Photoshop generative fill. And we'll start here with this picture. This is something which I used on a tutorial years ago before Content Aware Fill was available here in Photoshop Elements. And I used this to show how to remove this person over here, just using the clone stamp tools and tricks like that. And it's not that difficult of a project, but there are a lot of little details to get right, like the water splashes and so forth, and making sure the shadow is gone. Much easier when Content Aware Fill showed up. Let me show you that first. I'll go over here to the background layer, right click and Duplicate this layer, choose OK. Let's just make a selection around here. I'll grab the lasso tool, I'll make an easy selection, just like this, just outside of their figure. And of course we get the shadow in here also. Let's come back up around this side and over here, grab that hand, back around down here and then over the top. So here's how you would remove her using Content Aware Fill. Go up to Edit, come down to Fill Selection. Set this at Content Aware Fill. I have my set for 100% and Normal. Choose OK. And it goes through and it does a real nice job as you can see. But if you examine this carefully, you'll see that it is copying some imagery from other parts of the image to place into here, just to kind of fill that in. And that's how Content Aware Fill works. It looks around the area you want to clean up and then copies. For instance, this water spurt right here has been copied right over in here. This little bit of water right there is copied right over here. This little curve right there, kind of a curved shadow, that's copied from right down here. So it's copying from out here and placing it into this, just like using a clone stamp tool, but it's done automatically for you. I'll use Control D and it usually does a real nice job. And in most cases, that's really all you need. It messed up right here, as you can see where the line is kind of messed up, has been brought down a bit. And I think it does a reasonably good job. Let's now look at the new tool here from Photoshop Elements 2025. We'll do the same thing. Let's just make a duplicate layer here. Choose OK. And the new tool, go over here where it says Enhance, and it's the new Remove tool. You have a brush. You can adjust your brush size right down here. You can remove after each stroke if you want to. We'll do it all in one stroke. And I'll use this default brush and just come in here and paint over on top of what you want to have removed. Just make sure you catch the whole bit in here. You don't have to be super accurate on this. Just make sure you don't miss anything. And it's got that shadow right there and back up along here. And we'll get this side over here and then fill in the middle section. Let go and then Photoshop Elements goes in and fills that area in with content. And let's see how this works. There we go again, it looks pretty good. It missed a little spot right there. It's probably my mistake. I'll just go ahead and do that as well. And if you carefully examine this, it's using the exact same technique, the exact same trick as the Content Aware Fill. It's doing a better job of that. And it's not really perfect if I zoom up here, for instance, get some people showing up in here. There's kind of a square thing showing right there. A couple of things that really shouldn't be in or included. For instance, this little bit here, you can see this has actually been copied from right over here. So it's still going through and copying from one part of the picture and pasting into a different part of the picture to do the fill. So it's not actually giving us any new content in here. Let's just use control zero to fit screen. This little bit of flowering right here, this was just copied from right over here. You can see it right there. That was copied right over to here. But it does a very nice job. It's very hard to really see what is happening in here. And I think in most cases, it really does everything that you need. So as far as being a good tool, it is very successful at this kind of removing a person or removing an object from your imagery. It does a nice job. Okay, here we are over in Adobe's Photoshop program. And let's take a look and see how the generative fill works over here. I'll do the exact same trick, just using the lasso tool. And let's make a selection around the scroll right here. Same thing, nothing different about this. Just come down here and get around this shadow. There we go. And up this side here. And up and around and we'll catch that arm right up there. And back over here to the beginning. Edit, come down to generative fill. And you see this is right down underneath the Content Aware Fill. It's an additional line here in the Edit menu. Click on that. We'll leave the prompt alone for right now. We'll come back to that in just a moment. If you don't put any prompt in here, 
then Adobe Photoshop is going to look at the rest of the picture and do its best guess on filling in the stuff that you want to have removed. So click on Generate. Let this go ahead and work through. It's actually very fast about this, which is nice. It's a pretty quick program. You see over here on the right-hand side, we're going to be getting three options, which is nice. So you can choose the best of the three options. That's a little bit better than we have over there in Photoshop Elements. And there we go. It has taken that stuff out. So this is option one. There's option two. Notice there's quite a big change in here. Here's option three. I kind of like option three. Option one I don't like as much. Let's see, we've gained a bit of a hedge over here. In this one, we got some more trees showing back up in there. And on this one, have a lot more water. So it's focused on different things. And you'll see, though, it has come in and it has made new content. So this water bit right in here, that's not copied from any place. The stuff going on here wasn't copied from any place. Let's look at this option right here. Let's give us a couple of additional little water things. If you check everything else over here, we don't have these water shapes. So this is new water shapes that have been added in here by the Adobe Generative Fill. This corner here on the edge of this hedge, that's not available any place else in the photograph. So this is new content that has been generated to fit this picture. And that's the new thing about the AI-powered generative fill is that it comes in and creates new content to fill in the area that you want to. So you don't have any of that copying from one place to another, which can be spotted in an image. It's real clean this way. You know, things like the loops in here of the water look much more natural because we don't have any breaks in here. The loops are followed clear through and it's much more of a realistic look. So very nice on doing this vast improvement over either the content aware fill or the repair tool which is also available here in photoshop it's right there so they do have the repair tool as well let me show you now the phenomenal stuff that you can do here with the generative fill say i wasn't happy with these things and i wanted to do something else in here you have a prompt right here and you can do another generation let's just put in here a water fountain like that click on generate It'll do the same thing. It will take out the stuff we don't want. And then it's going to be giving us three options on water fountains. Brand new content, not available anyplace else in the image. Let's see how this does. There we go. It's added in a water fountain right there and put it into the sidewalk. It's very, very realistic, very natural. There's a different kind of a water fountain. Again, it gives you three options. Here's one more kind of a water fountain. I kind of like this one right there. I think this real natural looking. Notice that the water is different each time as well. Look at the very top up here. It's not copying that from any place. It's giving us brand new water in here to replace that or to fill in that area that we were trying to clean out. So you can do that kind of a thing here. Add in more stuff that doesn't exist in the original image. Let's go really crazy on this one. Let's just go up here to prompt. And I'll type in green and yellow dinosaur with a blue hat. Something just kind of bizarre. Let's click on generate and see what we get. And as you can see, it's actually very fast about this. It just takes just a few seconds to go through here and do this new image generation. There we go. There's one. Here's a green and blue dinosaur. We don't have a blue hat on it, but we have some blue in there, blue head. There we go. That one's got a blue hat. I kind of like that dinosaur. Here's another one. So we have our yellow and green dinosaur with a blue hat. I think I'll go with that one. And of course, it also cleans up the background as well. So it actually creates new content that is not available anyplace else in your image and adds it in and blends that in, including, as you can see down here, the shadows for these things. So it's a phenomenal program for removing things and then to help distract the eye, add a few more things in to help to fill in the space on your composition. So that's what true generative fill AI does. And if I went for a longer or more detailed prompt, I could get a much better image in here. But it's an absolutely phenomenal tool. And this, the generative fill, is not available over in Photoshop Elements, as you can see. It would be great if it was, but I'm thinking that they're going to be leaving this out of Photoshop Elements because Adobe would prefer it if you purchase the Adobe Photoshop program and not Photoshop Elements because they make more money, of course. They want you to buy the more expensive program. They kind of think of Photoshop Elements as being a learning environment. And once you've learned that program and you're happy with it, you then may want to move up to the more powerful Adobe's Photoshop program, which I think isn't a bad thing to do if you don't mind the cost. And here we are back in Photoshop Elements again. And even though this new tool over here, the Remove tool, is a real nice tool, a very powerful tool, it doesn't compare with the phenomenal power of the Generative Fill 
And I'd be very surprised if that ever shows up here in Photoshop Elements. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, I recommend getting my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you next time.